Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's topic, I wanted to talk about gender and the planets. I'm not sure what I'm going to call the title as yet. It might feature the word transgender or just gender. I'm not sure at this stage. But if you are interested in finding out more about how we can discover a person's gender through reading an astrology chart, this is the episode for you. So it's not for any particular type of person, you know, whether you're straight or trans or gay or whatever it is, this should be interesting for everyone. I am making this video in response to two of you in particular. Both of you have requested this video. Both of you have requested a video by me to look at gender and the planets and in particular, you know, can you see someone who might be transitioning or may want to transition gender? And um, I think the other one wanted to know more about having intimate experiences with the same gender. Can you see that kind of thing? And yes, we can. We can see these things. It's fascinating. This is a really big topic, actually. And in this video, I'm just merely going to be dipping my toe into taking a look um, in a very simple way. I'm not going to be complicated. I'm, we're just going to look at um, a few simple signatures and things to look out for. So what do I look out for when we're talking about gender? And specifically, say for example, if we're talking about people who might be making a transition or people who experiment with gender, um, what other things could we see with these three planets? People who experiment, uh, you know, you'll have, you'll have experiences if you've got these three planets together in a profound way. So Ketu is in the mix here. These three, these are the three planets that I, I look for. Um, when it comes to transgender and things like that. If I see these three conjunct, that's a big clue if they're together. Let's say you've got um, Mercury, Ketu together, but Saturn's involved, perhaps through aspect or, um, or maybe Saturn's on the other side there with Rahu, or as we're gonna see in a sample chart in a moment, Saturn was the Mahadasha that was running at the time when this particular person transitioned. So actually I'm going to draw up this chart. It's the chart of Bruce Jenner who became Caitlyn Jenner. I'm not going to draw the full chart. We're just going to have a look at a little portion of it. I'm not going to put the whole thing um, on the screen but I feel comfortable to put some of it on here because I think it would be quite helpful just to take a look and see, see, okay, why is it that this is part of this person's life path? This is part of this person's curriculum. You know, we're all part of Earth School, we're all here to learn, and the different things we learn about are indicated in a person's chart. You can see some of the things that they're likely to, um, to be dealing with as they go about life. So we're going to put Mercury here, we're going to put Ketu here, and we're going to put Rahu here. I am going to indicate that that's Virgo. Um, so we've got a kind of double Mercury there, and I'm going to draw Saturn on here. Saturn, as you'll see, doesn't really influence the situation too much. Um, so we've got, we're, we're looking at Bruce Jenner's chart here, who became Caitlyn Jenner in April and I clicked through April 2016 I clicked through to see all right what was going on April 2016 to make this transition happen and it's quite interesting we have this Mercury Ketu conjunct here in the 12th house in Virgo he's also what well, I should say she ha also has this in D9 chart in the ninth house, there's that Mercury Ketu combination. And actually, now that I've got the chart up and I have a moment, I'm going to take a look at all the Vargas 
uh, and just see all the divisional charts to see how often does this replicate this K2 yeah D4 chart we've got that there K2 Mercury combined it's 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 running throughout many charts right and that's the thing that you want to be able to do you want to be able to bring up all your Varga charts look at as many as you can in a glance and if you see this combination appearing very frequently you know that this is going to be quite a theme in that person's life now the transition happened you can see here Saturn is not really part of the mix Saturn's close by though which is very interesting and you know he's not far away but he's not particularly providing aspect um, not lord of uh, either house Saturn's not too much in the mix here with these two if I was looking at this chart would I be able to spot it would I be able to say oh this person is definitely going to completely transition gender in April 2016 I wouldn't want to make that call I, I, you know I, I, you can I can on, on past reflection and, and looking back I can see it but if I was doing this person's chart would I call it no I don't think I would actually um, I would look at this and I would say that um, that yeah you know I, I, I wouldn't be saying that this person is hugely masculine or feminine this is a, a lot of energy to indicate to me neutral anyway um, neutral for sure that's and, and, and Saturn's close by it's really interesting I was doing a reading once with someone live in person um, I do do readings in person with people uh, so if you're in the greater London area you can let me know but um, anyway she was telling me about her husband and I was looking at her D9 chart and this combination wasn't there but where Venus was positioned and certain things that were going on I was able to see I said is your husband very feminine and she laughed and she said yeah he really is and just by looking at the position of Venus and a couple of things I was able to see and I think Mars I was looking at but in terms of this chart I was thinking about this today that would I call it would I see and so let's take a look at April what's going on here in April because in order to transition the gender to go to that extent where you want to do it physically you want to do this in the real world and manifest this we really want the presence of Saturn, Saturn we want Saturn's energy there and when we look at April uh, 2016 which is the date that Wikipedia gives to indicate that that was when the transition happened I had a look in my software I had a look at the transits couldn't particularly see anything through transit but it's in the Mahadasha um, system that I was able to see this so I was able to see that ah okay so what were we running in April we were running I bring this up now 2016 now hang on let's take a little bit of time there 2016 let's scoot up to 2016 yep we're running Saturn Rahu now I'm even going to pick a day but I, the Wikipedia doesn't mention the day but if I had to pick a day I would say that it would be the 17th something significant would have happened uh, Mercury Mercury Ketu and that was really the time frame so you can see that it was in a Saturn Mahadasha that this profound change of gender was materialized you want to see Saturn's presence when something is being made material Saturn creates from everything I've studied about Saturn over a long time I've come to realize that Saturn has to be part of the materialization and I, I'm pretty sure he is the one he's the outer rim he creates the illusion of time here and he also creates the illusion of the material world so you, you definitely want Saturn in there if someone's going to make that major transition actually physically change 
um, their bodies in that way. I do think you want to see Saturn there. And Saturn is neutral, okay? So let's remember um, Saturn is neutral, Mercury is neutral, and Ketu is neutral. These are planets where there's really no gender, gender going on. So to have two of them conjunct in this way, you know, you can you can safely say that anyway that, that the person is is neutral, right? Um, yeah, it, it's really fascinating. Another chart that I wanted to talk about, and well, actually, so I've got a few charts up here. One of them is Martha Stewart, actually, and the reason I bring her up now, this is really interesting. I've studied her a lot in terms of, you know, what she's created as a business person and who she is. I find her an interesting character. And when we have a look at her, and I was thinking about her today because I was thinking that when you look at how she dresses, she's very feminine, hugely feminine, but she's not, she's not very feminine because if you look at her as a person and what she has created, she is really at the top of her game and she's quite masculine in terms of leadership, in terms of, you know, she's created a, an omni-media company. She's a media mogul. She was the first um, female biz business, uh, self-made, the first female self-made billionaire, right? So extremely successful person. And, you know, when I've seen documentaries of her and when she's at the head of a board table and, and doing her thing, and she's very masculine. And if you look at the way that she dresses, she there's nothing flowery or feminine or um, it's she wears like a very just business shirts and trousers and, and then this kind of thing. She's quite um, plain in the way she dresses. So I, I was thinking about her and how I was thinking, yeah, she's kind of she's got a neutrality about her and. Yeah, I looked her up. The D9 chart has this K through Mercury conjunct, right? Now, she's not transitioning gender at all. But, you know, and I wanted to look at different examples where this plays out. Um, another example I have is, um, and I'll draw this one up, famous YouTuber. And she's got, the conjunction she's got this in her d9 chart okay so here's another way how this could manifest as we see with the case of um, Bruce Caitlyn Jenner you know it went to the extent of this person completely transitioning gender actually I would like to see if I can with Bruce Jenner I didn't do this earlier today I'm just kind of over here in the D60 and I'm over here in the D45. No, nothing particular there, but there is a Mercury Ketu theme throughout many Vargas for Bruce Jenner. This one's interesting. So, and as we saw with Martha Stewart, it's in the D9 and yes, she is a neutral sort of a person. She's not, you can't, you can't pin her. You can't say that she's hugely feminine or that she's hugely masculine. She's, she's, got quite a neutrality about her. The other one is a famous YouTuber, female British YouTuber, the most famous one that we have in this country. I won't name her name, she's very young, so I don't wanna um, put her details uh, on here. But we'll put her, and I've mentioned her on the channel before. She has been a case study of mine in a previous video. We're looking at her D9 chart here, and in particular, we're looking at this third house. So where we've got Saturn, Ketu, and Mercury, we've got all three conjunct, right? And this is in Capricorn. So I'm pulling them out here, look at this. So this is really interesting, this is her D9 chart. It's really interesting because her partner, a lot of people, when they first meet him, they think he might be gay which is really interesting. He's got this kind, but he's not, you know, and then and they're a couple. Um, the other thing that we have here, which is really interesting, is that her best friend, who frequently appears on her vlogs, he is gay. And she's got another friend as well, another best friend of hers, who is also gay. And now what do we have here? This is the third house 
of peers and friends. And it's really interesting that her two closest, two of her very closest friends, um, they are both male and they're both gay. So I thought that was, that's a really interesting thing there. Um, and in her birth chart, I mean, she, so, but you would say that she's quite feminine actually, because when you watch her vlogs, there's a lot of makeup tutorials and it's really like just girl time. It's hanging out with the girls. That's the kind of videos that she puts together. But she's got this strong Mars and Saturn there in the 11th house. And it has made her an amazing business person, businesswoman as well. Um, she's very strong in that area. The other chart that I wanted to bring up was, um, this is a client of mine who lives in this country, and I'm sure won't mind me talking about this. And we're gonna bring up here the D60 chart of this person. Oh dear. Hang on, that's, my pen has just decided to be, to, um, there we go, that's better. <sighs> Technical problems with my pen. Right, so D60 chart coming up of a client of mine. I know this person really well and he doesn't mind me talking about this at all, which is good. I'm not naming any names, so it's perfectly anonymous. So now this person has the combination of uh, Mercury, Saturn and Ketu in the second house. They're here in the D60 chart, all right? The most sensitive of the charts. Every 2.5 minutes, this chart changes. You really want to get the time right um, if you're reading this chart. And we, you, of course, use this chart to rectify and get very precise with a person. Um, sometimes when I've worked with people who are, they know 10 minutes, they know a 10 minute window, I'll be using this chart to really rectify and refine and, and find that person's D60 chart. So this man that I was working with who lives in this country has uh, this, um, this combination of Mercury, Saturn, Ketu in the second house, in his D60. Now, how did this manifest for this person? Now, it's not anywhere else in any of the Vargas, in any of the divisional charts. Let's have a look. I'm actually going to look for it now and see. This does not replicate for this person at all. Nope, it really doesn't. So how did it manifest? It's really interesting. When this person was a child and you see a person's childhood in the second house, when he was a child, he had these experiences of um, wanting to dress like a lady. You know, he would put on his mum's clothes and um, experiment with makeup and experiment with nail polish, the works. Like it was, it was a fun childhood thing that he would kind of do. Um, in secret, let's have a look if there was any Scorpio here. Let's see what's going on. In secret, it wasn't known. I mean, okay, Scorpio's opposite. So right, we've got Taurus here and Scorpio's opposite. So that's, yeah, that, that is interesting. So it, it was a kind of secretive thing, but it was a childhood thing. And then they grew out of it. They were like, okay, I've experimented. I've done all that stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it was just isolated to childhood. So that's how that manifested for, for one of my clients. The other thing I wanted to bring up when it comes to gender, and let's see how I'm doing for time. Oh, I am going a bit over time, this is long. Um, I'll quickly go through it. Hopefully we've got a couple of minutes. Another gender thing that's important to look at, and this is just in relationships. This is for anybody. This is just across the board here. So another thing you want to look at is, whoops, hang on, is Rahu Ketu axis, right? This is important. If you have Rahu Ketu going in Kendra position, So we're going to have, I don't know, Ketu 
you can switch these around. These can go any which way, right? Any which way. You can switch the axis. You can do whatever you want here. But we've got Rahu Ketu axis running Kendra position, right? This is, this is important. So if you see um, a lady's chart with Rahu Ketu axis running anywhere here, you know that in relationships, she might have more of a masculine approach. So she might think that in order to make this relationship work, there's something I need to do, right? And that's do, doing. This is Mars. So these people think they need to do something. And if you have, and, and that will work, that kind of person will work if, let's say, for example, her man has Rahu Ketu axis also running Kendra position because he'll have more of a receptive approach to relationships, right? Um, I was coaching someone in Australia. This was, um, she was a client of my coaching client, but just pure coaching. She didn't want to see her astrology chart because she finds astrology scary. And I was perfectly fine with that. She said, look, I might get there eventually, but I don't, I don't want to know. She's like, I actually don't want to know the future which was really interesting because she did have some control issues and you could tell that she really wanted to know the future and she was really trying to create it. And through a lot of the things that we were going through, it was in her relationship sector where she was really suffering and really finding it hard. And she was finding it hard because she was trying to do too much. Now, I didn't see her chart, but I can tell you now, I astrology really helped me to coach her because I could see that she thought the solutions only lie in what I do and what she needs to learn she needs to learn the Venusian things she needs to to come here she needs to learn the Venus thing she needs to learn how to receive she needs to learn how to be she needs to learn how to wait how to let him come to you and all these kind of things. And she kept thinking there was something I need to do. And it's like, and she was, you know, um, texting every day. The other thing that she probably had, now I didn't get to see her chart. Um, she wants to have a session. She might have a session a few years from now, who knows? But um, in terms of looking at her chart. But what I can tell you is through working with her, she, she would likely have, um, a Ketu Mars. So she would either have Ketu in a Mars uh, house, so Mars will be the lord of the house where Ketu sits, maybe the two are conjunct, but it's like she's coming from lifetimes of masculine energy. It really felt that way. Um, and sometimes I'm right about these things. I love it when I guess correctly. When I was studying this whole transgender thing, I thought about RuPaul. RuPaul has come on the TV here in Britain lately and he's this just wonderful character who dresses in all these flamboyant ways and he does his hair and he transforms into anything. And I thought to myself, when I saw his dark skin and this blonde hair and just beautiful makeup and I thought, um, I thought he's got Rahu in the sun. He's got definitely and I plugged him into the system and I was like, yes. I got it right. He's got Rahu in Leo and I could see that. And the client that I, well, you're, you're not a client, you're my friend, the one I'm making this video for who lives in the United States. Oh, this is where, because I think you've got, let me bring up your chart because I'm looking at you today. Yes, you've got Rahu in a moon um, house there. And, and, and I think I would have said this to you over email that, um, that your job as part of, hi everyone, sorry the camera got cut again, but I think I was just talking about that friend of mine who's in the United States who requested this video. I've got your chart up and you've got Rahu in Moon. So part of your job of exploring, you know, the gender thing this time around is really to to explore all the different feelings associated with it, you know, and when you've got that kind of situation, you know, and, and, and from looking at your chart, I, you know, to me, it kind of feels like you can do a lot of that work 
without going to the extent of, say, for example, changing things physically. I'm just having a look at your Vargas now. I mean, yeah, to me, I kind of, and it, but, but if that's calling you and if you want to explore it, I think explore. I think that that's wonderful. And really, you know, as with any of this work, as with, let's say, for example, you're a, a lady who's, who comes from a Mars mindset or a very strong masculine energy, you know, whether you're in that situation and, and you're, you know, um, you're wanting to attract a man yet you're finding it difficult because you're so in this do mode that you've forgotten how to be or how to receive. You know, that that's a tricky situation. So whether you're straight or gay or trans or whatever, wherever you are in any of this, it's all just exploration and it's all just experimentation and learning and as we go you know our job and one of the things that when we study astrology and, and you know I've heard some people even go to the extent of saying you know deduct 60 points if your Jupiter is bad and oh this is a blemish if you're a woman who has this or if you're a man who has this well you know it's, it's not a good thing and, and there's a lot of all this judgment that goes on and I just want to say that no, there shouldn't be any judgment. It, it's wonderful to be, celebrate what you are, you know. I mean, it's, it's wonderful to, 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 to be a woman with strong masculine energy, you know, and, and, and then to soften over time if you need to or to use that to great effect and to be with, you know, a man who's, say, very receptive and who's more Venusian. There's a lot of couples that work brilliantly that way. So... I don't think that, you know, there should be any judgment in any of this or because um, some of this can, you know, a person can get down about it. A person can think I've got something wrong here. No, you haven't got anything wrong at all. You've got something wonderful and it's your job to find the wonder in it and to find out why this is beautiful and to use it to great effect and you don't have to change anything particularly but you know you have to understand and and the thing is that when we're in these situations let's say for example you're in the situation you're in the classroom where you've got Saturn Mercury Ketu together and you really do have to um, you know to work through that and you really want to make a big transition and let's say and this is another thing I was thinking about today one of the things I do is I look at the quality of your moon and your sun I look at your parents I look at what was it like to grow up what was it like to be you in your childhood what was it like to grow up and you want to look at the lords of um, the houses where the moon and sun are positioned and all kinds of things you want to look at all these things and you'll see challenges you'll see where it was difficult um, you know, and, and part of your job as an earth being is to experience these things and where there are challenges, let's say your parents don't approve and this is a very difficult thing or your society doesn't improve, uh, approve or, did I say improve or approve? I mean approve. Let's say people around you don't approve. Well, it's your job to find ways to approve of yourself and give yourself that validation, self-love, right? And as you do that, as you, this incredibly unique being, does that, you make that solution available to the entire collective. That's a service you're not doing just to yourself. You're doing it for everybody because that information is out there what you do, how you act, how you be, that information is part of the Akashic record, right? It, it becomes something. If you come up with a solution of getting through a tough time, you're going to help you get through it. But guess what? You might help countless others get through it as well. And that's got to be worthwhile, right? And you don't know who these people are. You may never meet them, they might be on the other side of the world. But that is the profound nature of your being and what you're able to do here. It's really quite incredible. So I want to say to anyone 
going through all of this, going through issues with gender or going through issues of say, for example, all you want to do is be yourself or do your love life or be you. And, and let's say it's hard, it's being judged by your society or by your family or whoever it is. If you can find a way through that and really embody it, really conquer something and feel good inside, know that you're doing it for you, but you're doing it for countless others who, you know, are in the same situation and that just energetically becomes available. It's pretty amazing. So I definitely want to say that to the two people who requested this video. I want to say that you guys are pioneers and, um, you know, keep clocking up experiences because that's all this life is about. You know, we don't take our houses with us. We don't take um, our cars with us or our Chanel handbags or whatever it is that we want. You know, we, we, um, we just take our experiences, our memories, you know, and it's our heart um, that... You know, if, if, if our heart was able to give a lot of love uh, and to receive a lot of love too, then, you know, we did a good job here in Earth School. So guys, I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I've talked for quite a bit longer than I was planning to. I didn't do any notes this time. Sorry if it was a bit scattered. But I just drew out a few different examples to say, look, these are some things to look at. Does it mean, it, look, if you have this combination, this Saturn, Mercury, Keto combination, you might have that and you think, oh, well, no, I don't have any of this. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you've got that combination and you will be experiencing this sort of thing. As we saw with that young YouTuber, you know, she just had friends who were gay and that was how it manifested in her life. Uh, as we saw in that client of mine, um, the, the English guy, you know, that was the D60 chart and, and in childhood he had those experiences, didn't have them again. So it's very interesting, very, very interesting topic. And as I say, huge topic. I've just dipped my toe in the water here. I haven't really gone into any profound depth or any of that. But these are just some pointers to help you to study yourself. So I want to thank you so much for joining. I want to thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome to all the new subscribers. and. Um, yeah, if you think this could benefit someone, then please feel free to share this video. And I look forward to seeing you next time.